can show you a hadith about he caused death of people who he did advise them to take medication like there is a woman uh, her husband he have a sugar problem in his blood so you know today we solve the problem problem uh, you know by insulin Muhammad he told her give him honey the woman she went she came back after two days she said he's getting more sick he is his body is shaking now he said give him I told you give him honey she insist and he get angry he said I told you give him honey as she said I did he said gave him again so she gave him again charge you so she came back after you know uh, he sent somebody she never came back Prophet, he sent me to see why you didn't show up anymore she said well there is no need because my husband is dead now he killed him this guy he have a sugar problem in his blood and he keeps saying to her give him honey give him honey Give him he was eating and when he was eating a fly fell down in the soup in his dish everybody was watching the fly is you know swimming inside the soup trying to escape and the prophet he is just eating like you know it's in the front okay because he's saying and the explanation that this is Hisa. So, if if it's fell down in the soup, you know, I will not be really able to eat from it because it's going to be disgusting. You know, I might eat it if. Ya سنحطم قيد مآسينا وندك حصون أعادينا ونزمجر وسط أعادينا يا رسول الله رجل قد جمع الحسان بالحكمة والصدق زدانا وبه ظهر الحق وبانا برسول الله يا رسول الله وقدوتنا لن ندع الغرب يدنسنا لن نرضى أبدا ذلتنا يا رسول الله لا ندري كيف تجرأتم وتماديتم بعداوتنا لا ندري كيف تطرقتم لرسول الله شلت أيد بتماديها قد حفرت قبرا يحويها فيما قد رسمت هادينا ورسول الله ورسول الله وقلوب وقلوب 
وقلوب وقلوب أبدا لا تنسى وقلوب أبدا لا تنسى من أصلحها فغدت ترسى سهما رمحا سيفا قوسا لرسول الله يا غرب اعتبر بما ضينا كم دسنا رؤوس عادينا وسنمضي اليوم كما ضينا لرسول الله لرسول الله يا غرب سيسطعكم نور قد شرق فوق روابينا لن يبقى الإسلام سجينا يا رسول الله يا رسول الله أشرف الأعراب والعجم خير من يمشي على قدمه باسط المعروف جامعة صاحب الإحسان والكرم لله قاطبة صادق الأقوال والكلم خبيت بالنور طينته لم يزل نورا من القدم يا خير خلق الله يا خير خلق الله يا خير تابونا لو وقع في الدم تبانا ورطة ورطة فعلا من أوليه لا عادة لو حاجة وقعت عادة كان جاهد هو المصيب الثاني ما تقلقوش انت وهذا وهل وهذا حدث هل يتم التغيير ده؟ لا لو قبل التقديس سهل انه بيطلع انما لو بعد التقديس ده خلاص بعد التقديس يشربها كامل video will be addressing Christian missionaries as well and why I love this scientific miracle mentioned by the Prophet Muhammad so much is that Christians themselves have been mocking this statement of the Prophet for a very very long time since the Muslims have been mentioning it for a very long time the Christians have been mocking Islam, the Hadith and the Islamic teachings in regards to miracles and medicine and healing for the people. So this is why I find this a very very interesting topic because just recently we have found and discovered scientific evidence that supports and confirms that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was true in his statements. So we will be discussing those in great short detail. Now if you notice the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him he was living in a desert and of course water was something that they valued very very much 
And we know that flies are a pest. You know, they hang around disease. They're always surrounded by decay and very, very bad things that have a lot of bacteria. And we know that since Allah created the fly, from His mercy, He has given it a antidote for us. Because, of course, humans cannot always survive with lots of disease. I mean, we need to stay away from diseases and, and protect ourselves. So from God's mercy, and He understood that, hey, we might go to a picnic place, we, might, we like eating outdoors, and we're always surrounded by flies. Well, majority of the times, I mean, you go to a picnic place and there's always flies there. So, especially when you open up food and you're having some nice lunch, then Allah has given the cure for the problem. Right? And He says, and the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam said in an authentic hadith, uh, and let's read that hadith, it says, Narrated by Abu Huraira, the Prophet said, If a housefly falls in the drink of any of you, he should dip it in the drink, for one of its wing has a disease, and the other has a cure for, for disease. And this is mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari, Volume 4, Book 54, uh, Chapter 16, Number 537, Page 338. You can also see uh, uh, this hadith in uh, Sunnah Abu Dawud, Volume 3, Book 21, Book of Foods. Number 338-35, page 1080. So, as you can see, we see a, uh, the Prophet of Islam giving a clear distinction that, yes, the fly has diseases on its surface, okay, on the wing. And this disease has also a cure which is on a separate wing, which is part of the surface of the fly. So he ordered to dip the fly into the drink or the food, wherever it may have landed, because one of the wing has a disease, or, or the surface has a disease, and the other surface has a cure for disease. And of course, anti-Islamists, like uh, Investigate Islam, have lied and said, Oh, this is a bunch of nonsense. How could your prophet claim that you should swallow a fly? It doesn't mention nothing about swallowing a fly in the hadith as presented. It just says, dip the fly in. And they keep parroting this. If you go to one of his videos, let's listen to what he says. Prophet, don't you see this fly? He said, Oh, I forgot to tell you. You know, if a fly fell down in your soup, just push it down, all down inside, and swallow it. You see what he said? Swallow it. He never said swallow it, and the hadith is very, very clear. It says, narrated by Abu Huraira, if the Prophet said, if a house fly falls in the drink of anyone, you should dip it in, for one of its wings has a disease. Anyone can understand from the context that dipping it in doesn't initially mean that you should swallow it. It just means dip the other wing in, and obviously you can throw it out after that, because it has a cure. Nothing about swallowing the fly. But of course, is this true? And I invite Investigate Islam, he's known as Christian Prince, to Islam, because it is true that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu mentioned that it has a cure. It is true and it's backed by science. Just go to the link below this video. It's called The New Buzz on Antibiotics. Right? And this is not a Muslim website. Uh, it's a scientific website. It's a well-known website. ABC Science. Just go and view the information for yourselves. And in this article, I'll just paraphrase what it says in this finding. 
Uh, a group of Australian researchers found that uh, flies did indeed carry antibacterial mechanisms. Uh, it, it states, I'll read, it says, such properties were present on the fly surface in all four species. Although antibacterial properties occur in the gut as well, you find activity in both places, said Mrs. Clark, who is a, uh, a biologist. The antibacterial material is extracted by drowning the flies in ethanol. So you see, the prophet was consistent in extracting the fly antidote. They, the scientists use the same method. Let's listen what it says. The antibacterial material is extracted by what? Drowning the flies in ethanol, then running the mixture through a filter to obtain the crude extract. Go read it for yourselves. So, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu statement to extract the flies' antibacterial mechanism is to drown the fly. Right? And that's exactly the same method these scientists have used. Mr. Christian Prince, are you going to say that these scientists had to eat the fly to extract the ethanol, the, to extract the antibacterial mechanism? So you see how your argument backfires beyond backfires. So there you go, folks. Read the information for yourself. Uh, and also, again, how did the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu know this? A desert Bedouin. I mean, was it a coincidence? I mean, it's not like there are... I mean, we have millions and millions of uh, uh, creatures out there. Insects, animals, creatures. I mean, not all of these creatures have these anterior uh, mechanisms. Uh, I mean, just go, go and do your own research. I did mine. And... Tell you the truth, I found about five or six species. Uh, you know, I found the Komodo dragon fly. Uh, it's a Komodo dragon, but that's ruled out because the ant antibacterial mechanism comes from the saliva and not the actual surface of that creature. Uh, frogs also carry uh, antibacterial mechanisms. Uh, we also have something called the, uh, the, the sea sponge. Uh, it's a particular sponge that uh, uh, lives in marine life and it also has a defense mechanism. And there might be a couple of other creatures as well. I haven't looked into it. But again, how did the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu make such a clear statement? Out of all the millions of creatures, he mentioned the fly. How did he get it right? Was it a coincidence? Was it chance? And why would... Why would the Prophet Muhammad do something so silly by jeopardizing his whole faith and religion by making a statement like that? Why would he risk and jeopardize his whole religion? So the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ put his whole trust and, of course, through the revelation of God and made this statement for all to see. This points the finger to the one who has revealed it to him. It can only come from divine inspiration and that's the only way this will make sense. So that's it. That's all I have to say. I thank you for listening and I thank Allah subhanahu ta'ala for giving us a beautiful miracle by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this miracle backfires against Christian missionary mockery against Islam. So now I invite you to Islam. And of course to my atheist friends, you might say this is just a coincidence, this is just chance. No problem. This isn't the only miracle. There are thousands and thousands of statements and miracles in the Quran. We won't argue that point. I'll just leave it to you so you can ponder and think about it. My dear friends, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace and blessings be upon those who follow guidance. Goodbye and good day.